DJ TV. Hey guys, welcome to another exciting edition of DJ MTV Daily News Update. Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you, depending on the time zone at which this video got to you. If this is your first time of seeing any of our video or you're a returning subscriber, please do not forget to go yourself for that. Like this video, share, and subscribe to all our channels. You can also check us out on our website, www.djmtv.news. Let's go straight up into the main news. Nigeria was far better off under Abasha than Buhari says Pat Utomi. Hey guys, this is still DJM TV Daily News Update. A professor of political economies and management expert Pat Utomi has said that at the moment, Nigeria under Abasha rule is way far better than the Nigeria under the Buhari administration. We could recall that DJM TV News has earlier reported that Professor Pat Utomi once said Nigeria is the most miserable place to live on an earth. In a video we are about to watch, we saw Professor Pat Utomi where he said that not to think of an alternative is to commit a crime. He also said if you check Nigeria and do your comparison, you will find out that Nigeria is at the bottom. He said Nigeria was better off under Abasha than we are today because in Abasha regime, people were safe, but in Bwari regime, safety is no more there. Let's watch the video. We'll be right back. SGDP uh, uh, million goals, uh, infant mortality, death. Check anything that you want to use to measure the health of a country. And our country is at the bottom. It's time to rebuild it. We must stop what has caused this hemorrhage. Just crippled the cities. We live in a Nigeria. Where, look, our two biggest import items today, food, petrol, the two things that we should be exporting to the world. Doesn't it tell you that there is collapse? Are you better off than you were four years ago? You share, would you think you're better off today than you were four years, six years? seven years ago honestly respond to that question and you will find why there's so much anger on the streets of nigeria there's so much hunger in the streets of nigeria and if we don't work an alternative that will stop this hemorrhage we're not patriots i could tell you hours after the election that we were in trouble i could really tell you that but you know we are people of hope so we hope some. A few months after, it was clear that we're traveling the wrong track. Um, I hate to do this, but someday, uh, four months, less than five months into the life of the government in 2015, I had a telephone conversation with Colonel Abubakar Umar. That conversation still haunts because during the course of that conversation, it was clear from both of us that our country was going to be in very serious trouble and that, you know, we might suffer history really terribly from what would come. But, well, so you, you make a mistake and the wrong people hijack a dream. You want to design a dream that cannot be hijacked. And that's the patriot's duty. That is why we must have an alternative. That is why, look, we focus. I mean, I saw you and my friend, Professor Day, going back and forth about this person, that person. That's the problem. We focus on big men, big names. We should focus on big issues. Big issues that will get the Nigerian people out of this state of insecurity. Big issues that will prevent our young people from being unemployed. There's so many of them who have been so unemployed for so long, they become unemployable, they've lost hope. And when they lose hope, everything is lost. And that's what we must do. Renew faith in people that government can serve their interests, not the interest of politicians. If you watch the 
voting in National Assembly, the way that the National Assembly humiliated womanhood in our country. If you followed, um, Professor A was talking about Esther Code and stuff like that. If you followed the spending of Nigerian politicians in a time when most Nigerians can't eat one decent meal a day. I give you an example. You know, you can always go to the world and find examples. I keep going back to General Obasanjo. Whatever his offenses may be, when he was president or head of state, I was a troublesome young reporter. And he said, oil prices have dropped. I'm sorry, we have to cut our coats according to our cloth, not according to our size. Head of state, biggest car, he could go anywhere and push a 504. And from there, he went all the way down. I have seen no move by the current political class to indicate that Nigeria is in economic trouble. India is pending. The motorcades are getting longer. The kinds of cars that are getting, the buying are getting more expensive. There's a total disconnect between the political class that we know and the Nigerian people. The people feel a betrayal. There is a social contract between citizens and those who have gone to represent them. You know, in corporate governance, essentially what we deal with is the fact that they are agents. So are politicians, they're agents of the people. What has happened is that Nigerian political class has forgotten about the agency function. The agency function requires accountability. Is that if these things go as structured, I mean, we're building the big tent. The big tent that will bring everybody in, but the guys who will drive must be people of integrity, must be people who have shown commitment to serving people, that leadership is sacrificial giving of self for the advance of the common good. Now, if people are now entering this tent, the first thing they must do is that they must follow a certain code of ethics in their conduct. And that kind of code of ethics will not allow politicians to be running around in fancy cars when the people are starving. It's you know, just not acceptable. You know, now, labor has been a major part of this conversation. I mean, I spent most of Friday or Thursday, yeah, Thursday, in the office of the president of the Nigeria Labor Congress. And this is not a labor party, it's the NLC itself conversing with actors, political, actors, civil society, and social movements. What about young people? Very important. Let me tell you the coalition that we're building, and this is very important. And I like to call it the coalition of the willing and the dispossessed. Who are the willing? Your willing are your dreamers, your philosopher kings, who see their country derailing, who see a different future, a better future for their people. The dispossessed are the women, that the young people who have been called lazy, even though the only thing happening in Nigeria now are young people in the tech space, are young people in Nollywood, are young people in music, who are exciting the world that there is something, after all, in that country that's almost oh, okay. becoming a laughing st stock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the young people are this country. And they you cannot be called lazy. You we have exactly what saved China when Deng Xiaoping took the wheel. So it shows that they don't know what they're doing if they think so lowly about knowledge and they dismiss any thinking as theory. Now, grandma will go chop and all of that. So for them, politics is about sharing and but, the stuff but, that has kept but, us but, down. So guys, welcome back. Here we have it. We have heard from Professor Pat Utomi, who is a professor of political economy, and he has said that Nigeria is way better under Abasha regime than in the Obuari APC administration. So, guys, do you agree with him? Because he gave a, he gave a lot of points where he said that during Abasha um, regime, there was safety, everybody was safe, you could travel from one place to another, but right now you cannot travel from one place to another without the fear of being killed or being kidnapped by some group of bandits. So guys, what are your thoughts? And he has said that he's coming up with a third force that would um, take um, over from 
PDP and the All Progressive Congress. And he definitely said that the youth are not lazy because he is working with the youth on this. Guys, do you think that Pat Utomi has a point when he said Buari's regime is not to be compared to Abasha regime? What are your thoughts and comments? Drop them with us in the comment section below. Thank you for staying with us till the end of this video. And as a way of reminder, we are also on Instagram and on Facebook at DJMTV. Also, you can check us out on our website www.djmtv.news. You can also place your uh, ad value with us at DJMTV and be rest assured that your business would get to the desired market. Until I come your way with another exciting edition of DJMTV Daily News Update, thank you for watching.